verse 8. And the second angel sounded. All right, so there's a second angel sounding off the second trumpet. And as it were, now this is interesting. It seems like this is where you can use a passage concerning volcano eruptions. All right, so this might be a passage you can use on that one. So a lot of people talk about end times, how we're closer to the end times and volcanoes erupting. This could be a verse for that one. And as it were a great mountain burning with fire. See that? That looks like a volcano going off was cast into the sea. See that? It's in the middle of the sea. So it seems like, you know, a volcano in an island. Now it says in the sea. So this might be pretty interesting. It says the sea. Isn't that what it said? Okay, so if it says the sea, then where is this volcano erupting? This, where is, this is where it might get interesting. Those of you who like to research, dig up stuff online, you might want to look up this one. The sea in the Bible... What you're going to find out very interesting when God talks about the sea on the earth during the tribulation is referring to the Mediterranean Sea at chapter 13. Go to chapter 13. Why do we say the Mediterranean Sea? Because of the Antichrist coming out of the sea. Oh, yeah. But when he comes out of the sea, his ethnicity, as you all know, he is Syrian Jew. When the Jewish people talk about the sea, the sea, the sea in their region, it's that Mediterranean Sea. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. See, that he, where's this Antichrist coming from? The Mediterranean region. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Look at that. So, I don't know if you can find some kind of volcanic activity or some mountain that might go off, or some place that the geologists are unaware yet. But there's going to be something that's going to happen, perhaps at the Mediterranean region, the Mediterranean Sea, where there's going to be a volcano that's going to go off. Wow. So it might be interesting for some of you to start researching, getting into the timing of this. Perhaps the timing where it gets closer to the rapture and tribulation will depend upon this mountain about to erupt. That might be an interesting thing to look up. All right, now let's look back in our main text here. So it's burning with fire, so that looks like a volcano, was cast into the sea, right? So when volcanoes erupt, what happens, you know, with this, the water around them? It erupts, falls into the sea, the water, and what happens? And the third part of the sea became blood. The water gets contaminated. Why? Because of the people in there. Or it could be the life that's in it. And because of that, it turns into blood. Or, or, it could be like verse 7, where God deliberately sent down blood to them with hail mingled with fire. Yeah. So God did the same thing right here. And the volcano out comes out, and blood may be mingled with that. That's why the sea can turn into blood. Wow. Crazy, right? Uh, let's look at verse, so a third of the sea became blood. So a third of that Mediterranean sea turned into blood. Look at verse 9. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, so a third of the creatures in there, what, died and had life die. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. So then there's going to be a third of the fleet going in back and forth, and God's going to destroy a third of them. Why? Because remember, the Antichrist, his headquarters is not going to be USA, Washington, D.C., I'm sorry. It is going to be Jerusalem, right. the Mediterranean area which can establish the fact even more that this sea would be a Mediterranean sea then. So then all of his activity and fleets are going back and forth with the ships, and then God sends his judgment on them. What happened to all those billions of tax dollars going to, you know, military war warfare, national security, etc.? There goes all your money down the drain. Amen. See, billions of dollars spent on military, you know, protection, national security, as well as for the environment. Look how you're wasting your money. All right, let's look at verse 10. And the third angel sounded, all right, man, the third angel sounding off, and there fell a great star from heaven. Now look at this. This looks like a meteor. So a star comes from out of heaven, burning as it were, what? A lamp. So that looks like a meteor going off. 
So what might happen? Well, after the angel slams it down, hail and all that, and perhaps what's next is a meteor that goes down. When this meteor starts coming down, it says burning as if it were a lamp. So that shows it looks like a meteor. Because it's a star and it comes down out of heaven. See that? Now look what happens. This definitely looks like a meteor when we keep reading right here. And it fell upon, look at this, the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. So look at that. It had to get rid of a third part of rivers in the world and the fountains of waters. How can it do that all over one star? Unless it's a meteor that what? Just broke apart. Yeah, there you go. So this, was, this is why this looks like a meteor. So then what does God do? Good night, man. You don't want to be here. This already looks like a wreck, isn't it? Who wants to go through the tribulation after this, huh? You got to be insane, man. This is going to be pure chaos, man. Run for your lives. Run for your lives right here. It's going to be insane. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. So God gave a name to this particular star that was going to come down and ruin all the world. And God called it Wormwood. Now online it became a big thing concerning about Planet X, etc., and a lot of people guessing about what Wormwood is. But you got to realize it's the reason why I didn't really fall for that. And a lot of people are saying this is when the apocalypse is going to happen, the rapture is going to happen, is because the reason why I don't fall for that kind of stuff is, look, this thing is well underway the tribulation. We're already raptured a long time ago. So that's why a lot of this stuff, I don't really fall for it. Yeah. If there is some truth to it, then the answer is, Simple. These are simply precursors to the real thing. Trust me, those are small things. Those are just precursors. When the real thing comes out, it's worse than you think. Amen. All right, now let's keep reading verse 11. So this guy's name, uh, this meteor's name is Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Look at that. So now it's like bitter. It tastes like Wormwood. And many died of the waters because they were made bitter. So notice that God, he what, judged the sea at verse 8, and then he wanted to take care of the rivers and fountains of water. See, there's no way, see, with, despite of your science and technology preserving water for everybody, God's going to make sure everything is judged. That's right. And verse 11, what's going to happen is you're going to take out your nice little bottle of water, take a nice slug out of it, and then it's going to taste like wormwood, and then you're going to die from it. How about that, huh? Verse 12, and the fourth angel sounded. Okay, so the fourth angel sounding off. And what happens? It's chaos in the heavens. The third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So a third part of the whole universe, so as the third part of them was darkened. So a third part of the whole universe is darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Look at that. So there was no light during the daytime, neither at the nighttime. So that just, you'll notice that the judgments here are very similar to how God judged Egypt with the ten plagues. With water turning into blood and people unable to drink and then they had to go through many days of darkness. So notice right here that God is repeating something that he judged Egypt. But that's no surprise if you read Revelation chapter 11. The Antichrist city is called what in the Bible? Egypt. Egypt. See, God's repeating something. Not only that, the two witnesses who are coming down at Revelation 11, they are Moses and Elijah. See, God's repeating his judgment. Verse, uh, some people might wonder that verse 12, if that matches with Matthew 24, where the sun... Uh, the sun and the stars of heaven went through chaos, if that matches with Revelation 6. Remember Revelation 6, where there was chaos in the heavens, Jesus is coming? Yeah, so I think that at verse 12, it seems to be very different. You might say, why is that? The reason why is because you got like uh, the fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet, and seventh trumpet. And when you come to the fifth trumpet, that lasts for five months long, actually. So this seems like that this event is going to be before. If that's the case... 
Okay, then that means that this truly proves that the seventh seal is an overview. See that? Because if uh, the chaos in the heavens at verse 12 is supposed to happen before the act, before the bigger uh, chaos in the heavens with Jesus is coming, then see that? This seventh seal is not after the sixth seal. Okay, I don't know if you recall, so let me go through this one by one. All right. So the sixth seal, do you remember? It was the heavens in chaos, right? We're at the seventh seal, aren't we? The seventh seal is a third of the universe, the heavens. Darkened. Here, Jesus, they see him face to face. He's coming. Yeah. Here, he's nowhere in sight. He hasn't come yet. So Jesus' coming is not yet. Wait a minute. If his coming isn't yet, then this looks like that this thing is before this thing, right? See that? So the seventh seal cannot be chronological with this sixth seal. So it seems to make more sense that this seventh seal is more of an overview of what's going on. This would make a lot more sense why there was silence in heaven for half an hour and God was preparing everything. Why? They're looking at a full, broad spectrum now. 